So this is some good advice for all those Instagrammers that like to approach bison or buffalo in the national parks. Remember this. Yep, somebody just uh, recently got gored at Yellowstone, huh? Absolutely. So they're trying to keep you out of this field and I, for one, wouldn't get close to one. No. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Southern. And what have we found? We have found buffalo. Finally, after... Real buffalo. Yeah, after <laughs> months and months of looking all over the west. Yep. These are our first buffalo we've seen. And they're alive this time. We're in North Dakota right now. We didn't even see some in Wyoming. And Wyoming has a buffalo on their flag. Exactly. We have cows on our flag in Vermont. And I guarantee you, if you come to Vermont, you'll see a cow. Yes, you will. But in Wyoming, we saw nothing. Nothing. So we're here at a harvest host at mm -hmm. the National Buffalo Museum. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn about buffaloes. We're going to harvest host it. Yep. And check out some of these fine creatures yep. from a distance. Absolutely. Plus, I think they also have the world's largest buffalo statue. Yeah, I think it's over there. Yeah, we'll check that out too. Mm -hmm. This is always an interesting fact to me. And I had learned about this when reading about Custer and knew it, but it just still boggles my mind that there was about 30 million bison on the Great Plains around the 1850s, 1860s, etc. And for a variety of reasons, that, that herd was brought down to 325 individuals. I mean, that was, it wiped out 30 million just to basically... For, basically for their, they sold their tongues as a delicacy. They sold their hides for coats and stuff. And, and they were just basically wiping out the bison so and that a lot the indigenous of it was for, people wouldn't have the animal that they relied on and be forced onto the reservation. And some house. of it was for sport. And, yeah. And so these, I mean, so yeah, 300 bison, and they say only about 6% now, are actually out on public lands roaming around. That's why we didn't see any. And uh, most of them are in private herds for food or for Native Americans on their reservations. So it's kind of like the story of the passenger pigeon, except this one had a happier ending. <laughs> Barely. I mean, when you think about 325 individuals, that's just about extinct. Yep. But very similar to the passenger pigeon, which was just wiped out by man. Yep. So this map here shows where the buffalo, back in the day, used to roam all over the United States. And they used to roam as far north as Buffalo, and that's why Buffalo gets its name from Buffalo. And they used to have trails to salt licks there, and that salt was a big big commodity in Syracuse and in New York. Interesting. This is an official copy of the Congressional Act that was signed into law in 2016 by President Obama naming the bison as the official mammal of the United States. As opposed to the American Eagle, which is the official bird. I would say so. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look into that. I think the, we'll have to look into that. I think the eagle is the symbol. It may or may not be the official bird. We'll look into that. So I couldn't resist. When you have a board with all these letters, you gotta write something fun, right? Now the question is, the question is, is do I leave it up? What's that? <laughs> the question is, is do I leave it up? The question is, do you spell love something right? L U oh, I need another B, don't I? Love Subin. Love Subin. <laughs> That's embarrassing. There we go. We won't leave that up. <laughs> there. Now you can't tell. So this is a really cute little area that the kids can play in. They have coat hooks over there. They have a little reading station here. They have a really fun little letter board here that I got to play with. They have games. They have a puppet show place that you can put on your own puppet show. So oh, cool. Put it on the puppet. How about this one? That's pretty cute. So they have all these different puppets that you can play with. They have additional puppets in here, or maybe just stuffed animals. Let's see. Oh, they're just stuffed animals. And a little area here where you can farm. And they have all sorts of things and stuff. I mean, how much fun would this be for a kid? And you could even have a little market. But you can get all your little produce and set up your little farmer's market. You would have loved that as a little kid, huh? I would have loved this, sure. And I would have charged people and 
make sure they put their money in their little display here. So, very cute. Admission is eight dollars each, which we did, and we also donated one more dollar. Yep. They asked if we wanted to do so, and yep. we did. So this is really cute. First of all, this is just amazing to me that this is a life-size image of this big blue stem lead plant, and it's just huge. I mean, look at that root system. But the other thing too that I find interesting about this is they talk about the buffalo and the prairie dog having a symbiotic relationship which cindy mentioned in this video if you want to check out our prairie dog video yep but it also says here that bison serve as nature's garden nurse as they walk they have hooves push plant material into the soil they break up and push seeds etc so anybody who's been on listen to the land at disney's epcot you'll know they talk about how the mighty hooves of the buffalo help shape the land and they literally did the American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. So the National Buffalo Museum used to have an albino buffalo in their herd, and they don't live as long because they have sunburn issues and are usually genetically weaker. This one ended up here and her name was White Cloud. So in case you needed anything buffalo, I think they have you well supplied here. They have the socks, they have all the garments, stuffed animals, stuffed toys, puzzles, you name it, it's buffalo. Except for wings, buffalo wings. Buff oh, true, buffalo wings, but those are from buffalo. <laughs> Ooh, look, you can get ground bison. If you harvest toaster, you can buy something and grill it up tonight. Maybe not grill it, but cook it up in the cook oven. Cook it on the stove. Yeah. Little prairie dogs like we saw at the uh, state park in Kansas. And we also saw them at Devil's Tower as well. We did. Yeah. harvest host has signs that lead you to where you need to be and this sign took us that way to the buffalo museum to the buffalo this is museum. like a little frontier town yeah it is it's very neat they have little shops here they have a general store that has food beverages you get souvenirs. Yeah. buffalo apparently it's the world's largest All right, we'll have Cindy go stand next to this for reference. We love Americana. This is about as Americana as you can get. The world's largest buffalo, 1959. Yep. Of course, Louis L'Amour is one of the nation's most famous Western authors. And they did like a little writer shack, I didn't mean really anything of it. My dad loved Louis L'Amour. Um, but he's from Jamestown, North Dakota. It's his hometown. So uh, that's why they have a lot of stuff from Louis L'Amour. And maybe that's going to prompt me to uh, read one of his books next. Yep, you could get a used copy of all his books in The Trading Post. Yep. Which was a collection of just sort of antique stuff. Right. Once the harvest host closed, we had the option to move wherever we wanted to be to be more level. And so if you have the option and you're doing a harvest host or you're boondocking, always park so that your rig refrigerator is not in the direct sunlight if possible. So you can see where the sun is here, our fridge is completely in the shade. This will help keep the refrigerator cool. All right, we're about ready to part. We went through our light check as we always do, and there's a good reason for that. Yep, so it didn't work. I'm, she's like, left light, and I'm like, I'm doing the left light. And so when I went to unplug this, look there, somehow a little itty bitty rock got in there. 
And that's keeping the connection from being made. Yep. So we're gonna take this guy out. Well, we got hit by a couple rocks yesterday. Yeah, we did. And got some chips taken out of our windshields, which was unfortunate. So just normal travel days, we took a big honking chip to our windshield. Somebody was passing us and yep. threw up the chip. Yep. This is the second chip we've gotten in one day. Yeah. I mean, this is insane. It's a big one too. You can see it like second. Second Both don't seem that bad. I mean, no, but it's it's some sort of rock that's being flung up, and it's hit our windshield twice, and chipped it twice. Okay. All right, let's go through the sequence. So, radio check, left light, right light, brake lights, display lights, and we're good. So, how was our harvest host experience? Well, I thought it was excellent, and for a couple of reasons. A, that's why we love Harvest Host, because we never would have known that this National Buffalo Museum existed, right? So right. we were just looking for a Harvest Host along the way, and we said, oh, cool, we'll stay there. So yep. the exhibits were great, as you saw in our thing. Uh, but the other thing, too, is as always, always good, is that it prompted further research. And so I've been researching buffaloes all morning. <laughs> just the, 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 the big issue that they're having is because there was only 300 Left. animals left to start repopulating the lack of genetic diversity is causing a lot of issues as well and there's actually only two herds one in Yellowstone and one in Utah that they believe are pure buffalo that there's no cattle cow uh, genes interspersed in the genetic makeup so it's just very very fascinating but it's a great recovery story Cindy and I were talking about an animal that went from 30, 60 million down to 300. And we had bi bison for dinner last night, no yep. spaghetti. So, yep. you know, it, it's like from near extinction to what we're having them for dinner. And it's, it's useful. Useful. So, yeah, it was awesome, Harvest Host. Um, again, we're starting to explore more than just the wineries, which is interesting. Yes. So, um, and we've got a nifty little stop. Yeah, way. we'll see how that works out. Uh, again, the great thing about just kind of floating around is all of a sudden we see something, so let's go ahead and see what we found. Yep, and we only have about 90 miles to tow today, so it's going to be an easy day, but we have plenty of time because it's particular good etiquette to leave your harvest host before they open up for the day. Yes, that's another good etiquette point is we always try and leave before the business opens. Right, and they opened up at 9 o'clock, so we were off by 9. Join us next week as Love Subbin goes nuclear. We finally visit that missile silo that we've been looking forward to seeing. Plus, we get to see the first peaceful use of nuclear power. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click subscribe. And comment below if you've had a favorite Harvest host that you've seen on your journeys. Because we come out with Airstream and RV related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.